Okay, so this is our Gaussian surface. It looks to be a bit wider at this end and narrower at that. Please forgive that that <coughs> drawing mistake. So, so now let us try to find out the flux through this through this Gaussian surface. Okay. Now this Gaussian surface is made up of this planar surface which is S1, the lateral surfaces which is S2 and this planar which is S3, right? So the electric flux through the surface, electric flux through the surface phi e is equal to e dot ds okay over the closed surface over this this closed surface right so that is equal to e dot ds of e dot ds of on s1 plus e dot ds on S2 plus E dot ds on S3. Correct. Now what is E dot ds on S1? See this is a planar surface and its and its area vector is something like this. Right? This is, and that is unique. Okay, so so this is this is say say S one vector, All right? And we can also see that E and S one vector they point in the same direction, so their angle is zero. So what do I write? I write I write over S one E into into S one into cos 0 okay e in dot ds1 so so hold on this is my ds1 vector right e ds1 this plus s2 s2 is the lateral one and here this is the this here okay this here and and in the back it is it is kind of this, it is not visible but it is this, here also say it is not visible but it is downward, okay. So at all the surfaces, all the four surfaces, right, up, down, left, right, the, the, the area vector is perpendicular to the, to the electric field vector. I still do not know what the field is here, maybe their magnitude is varying, I, I am not aware, but I am aware of one fact whatever is the field that is perpendicular to the surface, to the area vector fine so i write this to ds2 into cos 90 plus e into ds3 into cos 0 over s3 okay okay no, 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 no. Okay, I have used the definition for the dot product and what is happening here, what is happening here is, is I say that since ds2 vector is always perpendicular to the electric field electric field at all points on the lateral surface at all points on the lateral surface this is equal to Two, what is the integral of that? It is e, e comes out and over S1 I integrate ds1 
प्लस जीरो प्लस ओवर ई आई इंटीग्रेट डी एस टू ओवर एस टू राइट ओवर एस टू आई इंटीग्रेट डी एस टू एंड वॉट इज दैट एरिया सी दीज मैग्नीट्यूड आर द सेम दैट वी हैव टॉक्ट अबाउट हेयर द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द फील इज द सेम एज लॉन्ग एज द डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम द प्लेन रिमेन्स कॉन्स्टेंट सो दीज ईज आर द सेम एंड एंड इफ द एरिया ऑफ दिस ओके इफ एरिया ऑफ दिस इज ए देन दिस बिकम्स ई इन टू ए a and this also becomes e into a so that is equal to 2 e a we get the point okay where the planar the area of the plane is equal to a okay so so this becomes equal to the area of the of the s1 and s2 is equal to a otherwise all are planar surfaces so that would have been a wrong thing to say so that is equal to 2 ea right now what now what from the gauss's law this is s3 yes this is s3 this is ds3 s1 and s3 yes this is s1 and s3 from the gauss's law from the gauss's law what happens from the gauss's law what happens the electric flux is equal to q enclosed upon epsilon not that is e dot ds is equal to q enclosed Upon epsilon not, correct? And e dot ds is two e a, is it not? Mm. So two e a is equal to what is q enclosed by this surface? Can you tell me what is the q enclosed? The charge, in the, box. the charge here, the charge which has been cut out by by the box. that is spread over this area is it not mm. and this area is equal to a this area is equal to a so it becomes e into it becomes here here share the surface charge density charge density is taken as sigma coulomb per meter square okay so 2 into e into a which we found out to be the electric flux that should be equal to sigma into a that is equal to the charge what is the enclosed charge within this box it is readily seen that it is the charge that is spread over this area the area that has been hatched okay and the and that area area is a so sigma into a is the total charge on that right the tot the total charge is that and that divided by epsilon not a a cancels e becomes sigma upon 2 epsilon not does that match with whatever we had got earlier it should it should but you can understand i have taken maybe so much time explaining to you all this that has taken some time but if if i had kind of done in my own mind understanding the concepts it would have taken me hardly a minute to to do this okay does it vary for a thick sheet that's a different thing you 
the, the, the sheet, if it is an insulated sheet or if it is a conducting sheet, then things start changing, okay. So, so you just, just do it for this. So, so a thin sheet over which the charge is spread, you come this side or that side, whatever be the distance. See, it has become independent of the distance. So you be one millimeter close or be 200 million kilometers away, the field is the same. Okay? But you'll say we have, we have nothing like this that we have ever observed. But then, but then you must never have seen an infinite sheet. Okay? So what is the... Okay? okay? Now then what is the use? We do not have infinite sheet and you are kind of finding out for, for an infinite sheet. What is the use? The use is if the area is say sufficiently large compared to the distances from which, for which you are finding out the field, then we approximately put this formula there. For distances which are very small compared to the dimensions of the area or you can say the, the, this is the distance, right? Now distance cannot be compared to area, right? So you can say if d square is very very less than a, where a is the area of the sheet, a is the area of the sheet, okay? So maybe this is the area of the sheet and and I am placed say a distance, distance d from here, a distance d from the sheet, then for d square very very less than a, you will be actually using this and we do use it while doing the capacitors that we will do in the next chapter. In finding out the field due to a capacitor, we actually use this formula. Fine. But one thing that you should be absolutely clear about is it is independent of the, of the distance and you go to the right or you go to the left, the field is the same. So it radiates in both the directions. If it was a negative field, if it was a, it was, it was a negatively charged sheet, what would have happened? If this was the sheet, then the field here would have been like this and the field here would have been like this. You understand? And its magnitude would have been sigma upon 2 epsilon naught. So it only depends on the surface charge density and nothing else. Okay? Certain points that yes, your Gaussian surface can cut a continuous charge distribution. So it has cut and we are allowed to do that. Fine? Do we understand? And understand the ease. That is the power of Gauss's law. And if it is not symmetrical, if it is unsymmetrical, then that is the limitation of the Gauss's law. Then you would not have been able to use this. So this is symmetrical, planar symmetry. This is symmetry, yes. This is planar symmetry. Fine.